Greetings, discreet defenders. Well, I'm having so much fun out here today shooting 22 that I've decided to set up and uh, and do the Aguila Interceptor new box. And again, these are flat nose FMJs in 22 caliber, and we're shooting them out of the Ruger LCP2 in 22 LR. And uh, we've got the uh, same gel blocks as we used to uh, to test the uh, to test the Winchester silver tips but I've reversed them so we have some fresh gel to punch through in the first block. And hopefully we'll have space for two of them and then we'll set up and we'll, uh, we'll throw five across the Pro Chrono, the brand new Pro Chrono. All right, here it goes. How'd I do? Well, this one seems to have gone partly over the track of the, uh, of the Winchesters and escaped out the side, but this one appears to have gone straight down over its own track and just, yep, it just barely hit the table. That probably slowed it down some, but as you can see, it didn't matter much because that that round went easily past the 12 inch mark. There it is actually at 12 and a half, probably would have gotten a 13. So the other one exited the block. Uh, it's, not, it's not really relevant, but it exited the block at 11 inches. So we know the Aguilas are getting pretty decent penetration. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up and try to get a clean path or, yeah, I'm going to go this direction. I'm going to try to get a clean pass for one more of the Aguilas because I do want to get a real fair test on those. And uh, I won't use a T-shirt this time because i got to look where I'm shooting in the block pretty precisely. Yeah, and this time, all right, ah, shoot. Unfortunately, due to the way the blocks interfaced, that one took a bit of a dive. But actually, it's okay because it didn't it didn't hit didn't hit the table. And it's definitely gone 12 inches, gone just a bit over 12 inches. That one inverted. All right, you know what? I am uh, I'm just out of uh, just about out of space in my little little 22 block, but I think I can get away with putting one more through, if I do it just right, yeah, I'm gonna do one right up here. It'll be in a little bit high, but there, there is definitely room. If I put, if I, if I make my shot placement just right, there is room for another Aguila test. All right, got it through on oh, nuts. Where in the world did that one go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> it did ultimately kind of dive and yeah, it interfaced with the, uh, the old Winchester silver tip wound, but uh, that one you can see went about That one got all of 14 inches, almost 15, but probably because it punched through this weakened area here. But even, you know, the weakened area of the gel starts at 11 and a half inches. So, you know those Aguilas are going 12 inches. Doesn't really matter. Now I gotta add a couple to the, uh, to the magazine before we set up for the crony, for the pro chrono test, for the chronograph test. kind of dark. I'm going to turn it just a bit. See if we can get, get a little bit more light on that. And I'm going to have to shoot at a little bit of an angle here, but I think I can do it. Nine seventy seven. Ten thirty eight. A 
1005, 996, and shot number five is 1053. We'll review that. 996, uh, that's right, go through those. And then the high was 1,053, the low was 977, so a little bit of variability with those, uh, with those Aguilas. 1,013 is the average. Pretty powerful round, those little Aguilas out of the 2.75 inch barrel of, uh, of the Ruger LCP2. So, do with that as you will. I guess I would probably recommend the Aguilas most highly, maybe with the, uh, with the exception of, uh, of the CCI um, Velocitors. The, uh, the Aguila Interceptor is on a par, in my opinion, with CCI Velocitors. All right. Thanks, folks. This is Dave for DDR. Have a great week.